Victorious in death and life. Amen. Amen. You just be seated. Amen. So if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. But as we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right. And he's saying that they're going to come first. They're right. right. resting for a while. Right. Scripture says that those that are in the Lord are resting and, and their works do follow them come to their effect. And God is those that died are resting from their labor. Yeah, yeah. They're in the grave, but they are resting. Yeah. And when they hear the trump sound, yeah. they're going to get it by the ground. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Why is sitting and taking my ass off? Amen. I only want to say this for me. We are. Say, I, we are a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors. I know we're going through a lot of stuff right now. COVID and all, and they say there's another one on the way. Coming from India. And so we got to trust God. It's a time that we need to put Faith in God. When I was in the hospital, in the old hospital right there on Summer Street, uh, I had to go there and get a test done for cancer. Yeah. And uh, they did a biopsy because they said my blood work was just, my doctor said my blood work was bad. And he said he wanted to have a check my, check my liver at the time. And they did a biopsy on the spot at the hospital and they did and they told me that it's a possibility that I could have cancer and so my mom she came in crying and I told mom I said mama won't you stop crying I want you to believe in that God we've been talking about all these years all these years we've been talking about this Lord talking about how good God is we got to learn how to trust it. Right. Even in the midst of our troubles, no matter what's going on in our life, we got to trust God. Amen. Amen. We got to put our trust in Him. Right. So, Lord, well, for you I live and for you I will die. Yeah. My faith is in you, Lord. Yeah. And I'm putting all my trust in you yeah. because I know that you can handle it all, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I know that you can take care of it. God 
He's a good guy. He's watching over his own. He's taking care of you right now. Those who trust in him. He wants you to put your trust in him. Yes, sir. And I tell folks, I said, you know, they, they keep talking to me, you know, I, sometimes I don't have my mask on. He said, you better put your mask on. I said, I trust God. Yeah. My trust is in him. Yeah. And I know he'll take care of me. Yeah. Not that I don't wear my mask, but I, sometimes I forget it's needed. Yeah. But I trust God. Yeah. I put all my trust in him. What I'm trying to do is encourage your heart and then say, put your trust in God. Yes, yes, One day, God's going to come get us. We yes, have to worry about all this mess going on down here. Yes, and I was listening to some, listening to a story about Flint, Michigan, and about their water supply, mm. and how that, you know, they mishandled how they dealt with the water supply. And they had a new, uh, they, they had them getting water from the river. Mm. At first they was getting it from somewhere else. Then they decided to go get it from the river. Mm. And this, the plant that they was going to uh, use to go, the water come through wasn't ready for that. All right, all right. But one of the employees decided to say, he, he told them it's not ready for that. Not ready. <laughs> but they went ahead and did it anyway. Use that plant. Now folk have all kinds, they got different kinds of diseases right now in Flint, Michigan. Because somebody wants to do it their way. They want to do it instead of doing it the right way and take time and get the right things going, right facilities. They want to use that facility. And now the young sister is in the hospital. And they said she's not going to live long. God wants us to put our trust in him. Yeah. Stop trusting mankind. Our trust is in the Lord. We are more than conquerors Through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Nor death, nor life. I will trust God. Yeah. That's what we want. God wants us to say, I'm going to put my trust in you no matter what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We don't know when God is going to come. So we better be ready when he comes. Yeah. So in, in order for us to be ready, we got to put all our trust in And when he comes, the Bible says that he looks down upon the earth yeah. and see who do believe. Yeah. It's important for God, for people to believe God. It's important to God for us to believe in him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We must believe that he does reward to them that do diligently seek him. Yeah. Yeah. Diligently, yeah. not diligent. In other words, we gotta always be trusting and say, Lord, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it the way you want me to do it. Yeah. I know I want to do it one way, but see, the Bible says every man right in his own eyes in the book of Proverbs said, every man right in his own eyes. He feels that he knows the right way to do it. But God said, do it my way. Don't think that you can do it by yourself. You know, you know, everybody, every time you're going through something, you always call somebody else up and think that they're going to be able to handle your situation. First thing you do is get on the phone and go to talking to somebody and say, what do you think about that? Instead of getting down on your knees and calling on this God that you say you trust in.
I want you to tell, have the doctor tell me that the cancer is gone. Yeah, yeah. When I go in this time, I want you to tell me, him to tell me that cancer is gone. So, oh man, yeah, put me in a suite this time. Man, I was sitting back in a beautiful room. Oh, <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I hear you. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't worry about nothing. I just talked to God about healing my cancer. Yeah. The doctor, the door was closed. The doctor bust through the door. He said, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. But you know, the doctors want to keep on treating. So the doctor said, I think I still need to do a little more. You know, you want to do some money. money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God is able to do anything but fail. Yeah. See, God knows that He was going to take my aunt. He knew yeah. it was time for her to go. Yeah. See, that's the way God works. He'll take care of you. And you know what he's doing. Oh, yeah. We be thinking, we always complain about when God does something that we think he shouldn't be doing. We complain. Yeah. Oh yeah, we complain. Mm -hmm. But God knows what he's doing. Yeah. And we got to trust him no matter what. Yeah. And I learned a lesson from that. I learned that I got to put my trust in him all the way. Not just some of the way. Oh. Not just partial. Completely. Amen, amen. And God, I got the cancer, mm -hmm. but God took care of the cancer. Yeah. Ain't God good? Amen. Ain't God good? Y'all all be clapping. Man, if somebody get to live with y'all, be clapping. God is able to deliver you out of your situation. Amen. Oh, yeah. We are more than conquerors oh, yeah. through him that loves us. We are more than a time. God is able. Yes, he is. He's able. Yeah. I don't care what's coming down the pipe. I know it's some terrible situations that's coming down the pipe right now because we're, I know we're in some serious times right now. Amen. That's right. God yeah. is going to take care of this. Right. Yeah. He's going to take care of this. Yes, that's why you got to stay hmm. under the protection of God. Yeah. You got to stay in God's heart. You got to stay close to God. Lord, let me get closer to you. Let me get closer to you. I need to be right up under you, Lord, in your bosom, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I know what time it is. You know what? <laughs> when I can tell it when, it, when, when people stopped, when the world was changing, I began to feel it. The atmosphere was getting, you can feel it in the air. I said, I said God's getting ready to come because there's some serious stuff going on in the world. And I can feel it in the air. You can feel the, the change. The attitudes, the people attitudes change. Everything's going to change. That's why I know. That's why I begin to get close. And I want, I, I'm urging you today, put your hand, put your arms out and call on your God. Put your arms up and say, Lord, I need you. Don't worry about that you ain't going through nothing right now because eventually you're going to go through something. Amen, amen. You're going to go through something. If you're in this life, you're going to go through something. But you need to call on him right now and say, Lord, I need you. I get excited when I talk about the Lord. That's all right. But I want you to convey this to you. Yes. And let you know that can't nobody else do nothing about your situation. But God. Amen. And we need to put our trust in you. Amen. Your pastors, pastor be preaching all the time. Yes, yes. Constantly yes. preaching. Yes. Boy, we going to be bad. We would have muscles like, man, we would have some spiritual muscles. Huh? Man, I'm a muscle for the man. Every time you hear that word, man, that word. Man, I'd be like, yeah, that's a good word, yeah. Mm. You know, I'm country, so I'll say good stuff. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> well, you can take it, you can, you can, how this works, how you say it, you can take the country out of it. God is good, man. God is a good God. And I'm going to sit down, but I only had a short time, so I'm going to sit down. <laughs> but when God, I get talking about my God, Amen. I got to tell you some stuff. Let you know how good God is. I would listen to the pastor. He was talking about when he was going through this situation. Mm -hmm. And he had, uh, he had a heart attack or something. Stroke, like stroke, stroke. Yeah, and he was talking about it. And he was telling, uh, telling you how he, how he went through it and what would happen. And, I, and we and look at it today. And God has blessed him. Too. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Put that word like that, and, you know, he, God had to bless him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He can put the word out, man. Oh, he got to put that word out. And that's what we need to be doing. Put God's word out. There. We got a lot to talk about. We got to gossip. We got to do all kinds of stuff. But we should be talking about God more than we do. Amen. Amen.
parts of eating the last, the last day of the year, 2020. Thank God has been good to us. Pastor David Williams, First Lady Williams, and Reverend uh, Lane and his wife have done a good job.
press toward the mark. Press it on. The other way. Yes, sir. The Lord God has been mm. kind and merciful yes. to each of us during the year of 2020. Yes, sir. And I come tonight to remind us that whatever you have gone through uh -huh. in the year 2020, have mercy. it should have been for the furthering right. of the gospel right. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody ought to be able to look at you and yes, see sir. that you've had some trials, yes, tribulation, you've been on your sick. But yet you had faith in God that God was going to see you through. Paul here gives us some things to think about for the new year. He gives us some advice that we should pray about and press toward the mark. Listen to me, Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself. They have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me. And reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Something And keep our eyes and our hearts, Amen. our mind focus on Amen. what's ahead. Yes, Things like that have been bad in our lives, mm -hmm. the failures yeah. that you and I have experienced yeah. in 2020, yes, the hurts that hurts. have been caused by other people. Yeah. You should forget about those things. Amen. The sins that you and I have committed. We ought to forget them and press toward the mark. However, we ought to confess it. Repent of it and forget it and move on. Isn't that so? Forget about the disappointment. And the stupid decision yes, that you and I have made. Yes, Isn't that so? Yes, Paul says there are some things worth holding on to. Yes, but there are some things that we need to turn loose. What are they? Envy, hey. jealousy, and backbiting. And press on toward the mark. In 2021, we must learn how to work together. Fellowship with one another. Then, the Bible says, then they that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day that was added about 3,000 souls to Christ. Is that right? Yeah. What you didn't do in 2020 yeah. is no use in lead, losing some sleep over But create in your mind and your heart that I'm going to do better than I did yeah. last year. Amen. This is what Paul says here. Paul says in the 42nd verse, they, the early church continued steadfast in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. You're going to need prayer in 2021. I discovered that before things get better, usually they get worse. You haven't seen nothing yet. My pastor laid out this and William said back in the 70s and 80s, the time would come 
when, when babies would be cut out of a, a mother's stomach. The time would come when you would not be saved sitting on your back porch. Are you with me? Those times are here. And the Bible, the Bible, is God's holy word, and he said before the end of the world, there would be wars and rumors of war. Fathers and sons would be against one another. Mothers and daughters would be. In other words, we would lose respect. And we would become lovers of ourselves. In 2021, we must walk, we must walk together, pray together, and cooperate together. Until Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ, that ye speak all, speak the same thing. And that there be no division among you. Can I tell you tonight that across America there are division within our church? Division in our home, division in our community, division from the White House to the poor house. Isn't that so? We who are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, we ought to be headed in the same direction. We ought to, we ought to have the same goal, the same, same mind on our way to heaven. Then he said, we must be unmovable and steadfast. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as he know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Payday is coming. We must remain faithful. We must remain focused, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. Mm -hmm. And he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. My yeah. brothers and sisters, God sees everything. Yes, yes, yes. I say God sees everything. Yes, right. So as we press toward the mark, there are some, the, there are some of the most trying times for many Christians. Right. Yet, it is the best of time to be a witness about Jesus. People need to hear about Jesus. Not, not Donald Trump. Not the stock market, but they need to hear about Jesus. Isn't that so? Uh, uh, Mr. Trump and, and the other people couldn't do no more than what God allowed. Romans 8 and 28. Said that all things work together for good to them that love God. When I look at the church today across America, when I look at Eastern Star, New Zion, and Memorial, all God is doing is pruning the church. I know what it is. Some dead weight, some dead weight was in the church in 2020. But in 2021, there are some dead weight. That God going to eliminate. Isn't that so? Well, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, these are trying times. But it's the best of time for the Christian to be a witness about Jesus Christ. Uh, for what he had done. Well, be a witness about what God had done for us. You'll, you'll be able to tell somebody in when I was wrong, God kept me. Amen, amen. God protected me. No, nobody here tonight has lived a perfect life. All of us from the pulpit to the back door have done some things this year that God will not do. But aren't you glad tonight for God mercy and God grace? Yes, we ought to be a witness. 
about what God can do. Somebody here tonight can tell you, I haven't had a job these 12 months. Amen, amen. But God has put food on Yes, he has. Yes, he has. I haven't had no insurance or automobile, but, but God made a way for me to get to where I, I need to be. You ought to tell somebody how, how God has blessed you in the midst of COVID-19. God did me. David said on one occasion in Psalm 37, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Though he says in verse 24, though, though he falls, he shall not be other than passed out. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Even in these difficult times, that we are experiencing now, God is still good. I say God is still good. And he is still protecting his people. I made up my mind that regardless of life's situation, regardless of the pitfall, regardless of the solid blocks and the obstacles in our way, I'm like Brother Paul, I'm determined to press on. Realizing that, realizing that I can do all things through Christ with such me. I'm persuaded that no situation is too hard for God because He is the master of any situation. Isn't that so? Yeah, yeah, Paul. Paul write one of his letters, first letters to Philippians, while he was in prison. Do you not know God get the best out of us? When there are hard times. We soon forget God when the road is easy. We say, I can make it because I finished college. I have a good job. A car is running good. We sometimes we soon forget. Lord, have a witness here. Yeah, brothers and sisters, Paul, Paul was in prison and he sent it to, sent the letter to the Corinthian covering or rather the church at Philippi. While he was being held in a cold prisoner in Rome. Unlike most of Paul's letters, these epistles were not written uh, to specifically add deal Church. Problem one against false teachers. Isn't that so? Many of us today are preaching sermon that uh, many are waiting for you to preach a sermon to make you feel good. But if you preach God's word, uh, it's going to rub you in the wrong way. Go ahead with it. Uh, brothers and sisters, they're false teachers. I said false teachers are, are in the church today. Isn't that right? Paul expresses warm and warm thoughts to the Philippian believers for their support to him and his ministry. Listen, what, it, what Paul says here in Philippians 1, chapter, chapter 1, and verse 3, he says, I thank my God upon every Remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Somebody here have gone through the storms, but yet you held on to your faith. Paul said, Be in confidence of this. The thing that he which has begun a good work in you would perform it until the day of Jesus. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah, in verse 7 he says, even as it is me for me to think this of evil because I have you in my heart. In as much as both 
in my bones and in, in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. All ye are partakers of the grace. For God he is my record. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, after all that God has done, we ought to be a witness about him. For he said, here I'm going, my God, for God is my record. How great that I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may bound, abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all this. That he may approve things which are excellent. That he may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the truth of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ. Unto the glory and praise of God. But listen to what Philippians 4 and 10 said. But I rejoice. Uh, you'll find yourself rejoicing. You'll find yourself rejoicing because uh, uh, God has left us here. God has spared our lives one more time. Isn't that so? Somebody here tonight can tell you, uh, I have not been in the food now. Isn't that right? There's nothing wrong with getting in the food line. You need food. But God has kept us. Matter of fact, that somebody here tonight can tell you that God has given me more than what I need. I tell you, God is giving. And so, uh, Paul said, uh, on one king, every time I talk about he keeps on blessing me. So I want you to know that I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to. In the Lord, really. That now, at the last of your last of kill me, has flourished again, wherein he will also kill. But he lacked opportunity. And yeah, every time you have an opportunity to do good, you ought to find yourself. Because somebody is waiting to help somebody else. In other words, you ought to see the moon. To let somebody know that God has smiled on you. You don't hear me. The Apostle Paul founded the church in uh, Philippi. Doing uh, the second trip, uh, yeah, of his missionary journey. A business woman by the name Lydia became one of uh, the first converts of that city. The church of they need to become a witness for Jesus. Do you all hear me tonight? And uh, Acts 16 and uh, 13 said, and all the cycle of the, we went out of the city by uh, a riverside where uh, prayer was made, and uh, and uh, we sat down and spake unto the woman uh, which uh, resorted by And uh, the same woman. Name Lydia. Mm -hmm. Now, a seller, a purpose of the city which uh, worshiped God and heard us. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to hear us uh, talking about God. Yeah, somebody ought to see us witnessing uh, about the yeah, yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm hurting sometimes. Uh, but you ought to still be a witness. 
strong. Saved 
I had some brothers and sisters that were not saved. But, but mama religion would not save me. Mama religion won't get me into heaven. I got to have a relationship with God for myself. And that word have I hid in my heart. Read that. Psalm 119 verse 10. Let put on that. Number two, God, God wants our whole heart. You can't be a Christian on Sunday morning and a heavy on Monday. Is that right? With my whole heart. I'm holy on Sunday, but I'm a little everything on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. With my whole heart. Have I saw things? All right. Oh, let me not wonder. When you leave God, mm -hmm. when God is not first in your life, you start wandering through life. You catch on to everything trying to make it. And yet you discover that now I got a new car, I got, a, I got my own house, I got, I got all of this, but I'm still not happy. You cannot have real happiness and, and, and gladness in your heart without Jesus Christ. But you have a temporary stuff. Yes, and temporary stuff fades away. Yes, it does, sir. What does he say? That word have I hid in my heart. Hide God's word in your heart. You might lose your Bible. Somebody might steal it. The people today are stealing everything. Yes, sir. Is that right? Some folk will steal sugar out of the cake. Out of the cake. Yes, roll. Do you know we are living in a sick society when children were steal from their mothers and their mothers? Hide God's word in your heart. And every time you and I want to do something wrong, God's word reminds us that God is not pleased with you. All right? That I might not sin against thee. That I might not. God's word would keep you. If you want to be kept. Somebody, somebody, somebody tonight. And possibly right here at Easter Star. New Zion, New Mori. Somebody, somebody tonight is waiting for benediction so that they can go to another party. You can't mix. Is that right? Amen. What does it say? Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I... You got to be taught. You got to be trained. Amen. In 2021, make yourself available to be taught and trained. Amen. Is that right? Well. Every Tuesday, quiet, meet for rehearsal. Are you with me? Yeah, no. That they still striving to perfect that song. Yeah. I know we're going to be a strong Christian showing up this on Sunday morning yeah, no. and sometime watch the month. A baby just don't fall one time and, and they can walk straight. They fall many times before they learn to walk. And the more you hear God's word, mm -hmm. the more you hear God's word, you can shake some stuff off your back. Yes, you know he is talking to you, so you shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yeah. So many people in church are listening to foolish folk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Do you know there are people? Mm. Yes, sir. And God knows I hold that and pray that all of us live a long time. David, when you walk down the aisle and accept the Christ, you start, you start working on, on going to heaven. Do you know any other place better than heaven? It's bad to die and don't have a relationship with God. I'm going to sing something. 
I'm not giving that for a moment. Go, go to the uh, go to Judge. Tell somebody else says in the book. Judge. Chapter 7 and verse 2. I've never seen so many scared Christians. Your daddy done already told you, I'll take care of you. I'll supply all of your needs. Listen, in 2021, God still approved me this year. I told you, sometime when our mother was pruning the flowers, some dead leaves was on it. They plucked the dead leaves off. But they were no good. Dead weight. Our churches across America is loaded with dead weight. They won't say amen. And they look at you like you from Jupiter or Mars because you say amen. This is what the Lord tells Gideon. Now Gideon started out with 32,000 people. But he took 300 men. And the Lord gave him victory. Pray help him fall by the wayside. There was some seed that fell on good ground and some fell on stone ground. You got, you got to walk the wood. You got to have an appetite for the word of God. Is that right? Yes, sir. I told you not long ago, no matter how much milk you drink, how much Pepsi or Kool-Aid you drink, if you haven't got an appetite for water, you want some water, that's not right. something that's been. Amen. I don't care how many cars you have, how much money you got, where you live, if you don't have Christ in your life, there's, there's a void in your life that you're going to be always reaching for something. No substitute but Jesus Christ. Judges chapter 7, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Gideon, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me. And in, in another translation, he said, He tell, he tell Gideon, Gideon, tell your soul <laughs> that you're too many. You want to tell your house? Every time you talk, come around, just sitting around lying and joking. <laughs> Pull out the Bible. <laughs> and don't, don't ask them what they think of the scripture. You got to be able to teach the scripture. Because there's some folk got some wild ideas about what the scripture says. They say, you know, I think, I think. Hey, when it comes down to the word of God, you don't have to do no thing. Just do what the word says. What is it? For me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. My own hand. In Deuteronomy 8 and 18, I believe, he said that, that, that you will. Somebody read that right there. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. It is God who giveth thee power. Are you going away into 21 not being a tithe? Are you going away into 21 being a free load? Listen. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto my fathers, unto thy fathers. Some things he promised mom and dad. That he would do for that church. And all of us here are reaping some benefit of somebody else who prayed for us when we didn't have children to pray for us. Go back to Judges. Judges, go back to Judges. Judges chapter 7. And look at what verse 6 and 7 said. The Lord said, You got too many. And the number of them that left, putting their hand to their mouth, 
See, we need some dog lappers in the church. So nevertheless, people in the church. The fellows had the vision and, and Jesus said, have you caught anything? They said, they said, nevertheless, whatever you say now, I'm willing to do it. We need some nevertheless people. We need some dog lappers in the church. Them that have water like that. Those are the ones that he wants. For 300 men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees. In other words, 300 men, send the rest of them back. God will clear out his church so the real soldiers can come for it. Sure, never time, there's it all over the city. Had watched me, sir. Now we run to our we we run in our own little house. As if God came not to do it. God is a key. I'm closing with this scripture. Psalm 107. Tell you neighbor one more time. It's in the book. Ain't no use of me saying nothing to you if it's not in this book. You have to read it for yourself. Psalm 107, verse 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Have you, have you thanked God for keeping you? Come on, right in here. Our children have not been healed. We have not been healed. Healed. Amen. Some of us have not had accidents. And if you got in the food line, you got in the coast of water. Is that right? Amen. And sometimes God lets you look at that line mm -hmm. to remind you that it could have been you. That's so true. God has been good. And there is no doubt in my mind that in 2021, this is what he said here. Read that verse again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, if God has not done nothing for you, you ain't got nothing to say about what God has done. Who won't give this moment? Close your hands right now. Whose eyes you look at? It's the Lord. And he says, what, what is it there? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of churches are too quiet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I know many of you all may not know, right? But for B.B. King, <laughs> rock me, baby. Yeah. Rock me all night. Rock me, tell me. We said the church happy to be a church. Read that. To 
Yeah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now listen to this. You may not have been an alcoholic. You may not have been a drug addict. But you've been an egg child. You've been an egg head. An egg devil. And he redeemed you. You don't think like you used to think. What used to interest you don't interest you no more. Your mind and your heart has been changed. Thank you so very much for being here on tonight. And we bid you God speed. Hope each of you will have a great and a prosperous new year. All right, brother officer, come on, let's receive our offering.